Hi everyone, welcome to the last in the series of our employability webinars. Uh, we've previously held three webinars which you can view on our website, the link for which will be at the end of this webinar if you need it. Um, our last webinar will focus on giving you an insight into what it's like to work in accountancy at Grant Thornton. Before we kick off, we firstly wanted to just cover a few housekeeping points. If you could please follow the instructions on the screen with regards to the audio. We do have someone on hand to answer any technical questions you may have. Um, if you're unable to get onto the webinar or you're unable to hear us, someone will be here to respond to your queries. Um, also, just to let you know that this session will be recorded. If you do have any questions throughout, you can please uh, enter them into the questions box and we will try to answer them at the end. There will also be a survey at the end to give feedback on any of the webinars that we have held. I will now hand you over to my colleague Janet for introductions. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, so yeah, so just some introductions into us as your host for this session. Um, so my name's Janet Piedrahita. I'm a senior resource advisor in the Early Careers team. I've been working at Grant Fulton for around four to five years. Um, and in order to break the ice a little bit more, I thought it'd be nice to share a fun fact about myself, which means that the rest of the speakers will have to do this as well. Um, so my fun fact, I've shaken hands with a really famous celebrity called Kermit the Frog, as well as Kermit the Frog's puppeteer. Um, so, Amy, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Thanks, Janet. Uh, so, my name is Amy Wilcox. I am a resourcing advisor in the Early Careers team, so I work alongside Janet. I've been at Grant Thornton for about 10 months now, and my fun fact is that the first celebrity I saw when I moved to London was Richard Branson, who isn't so popular at the minute, but that, that's who I saw, so I had to go with that. Um, <laughs> we're now going to move on to our guest speakers. Uh, so, Dom, would you mind starting? Uh, oh, I think you're on mute. Yeah, perfect. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I've been with Grant Thornton for about three years. Uh, <laughs> financial services, business, risk, services team. Um, you can ask me more about what that means later on if you like. Um, my company is that I uh, actually met my wife in my first week at Grant Thornton. Um, we were in the same team and uh, yeah, we got married uh, last summer. I think the next person on is Jess. Hi, uh, my name is Jess and I work in the tax department of the business, uh, particularly in the reward advisory team. And I've worked with Grant Thornton for nearly two years now, coming up to two years. And fun fact about myself is that I danced for the Queen when I was 16 in Westminster Abbey. <laughs> and I think Vincent, you're up. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. My name is um, Vincent. Um, I work in. I'm an audit associate working in our human capital and consumer market. I've been working at Grant Thornton for oh, just over two and a half years now. And my fun fact is that I am a massive admirer of Meghan Markle. <laughs> <laughs> and how to introduce Sophie Williams. Hi everyone, um, welcome to the webinar. My name is Sophie and I have been with the firm for 10 years. So I joined as a trainee and trained, did my training scheme with Grant Thornton. Um, I'm a financial services audit senior manager now um, to have progressed through, which has been great. A fun fact about myself, just to keep on the royal theme, is that before Grant Thornton, I used to work at Buckingham Palace. Oh, <laughs> great. Thank you for the introductions. We are now going to move on to our agenda for the webinar. Uh, the main aim of this webinar is for you to leave with a, a general idea of what it's like to work in accountancy at Grant Thornton. The format of this session will be a live Q&A with the people who you can see on the screen. Um, we will focus on the topics also on the screen. So that's our entry programmes, the qualifications we offer, the different job roles we do and any tips on progressing your career. If there's anything you would like to know that we don't cover, there will be an opportunity to ask questions throughout and we will answer those at the end. So we will move on to our first topic, which is our entry programmes, and I'll hand over to Janet. Great, thank you, Amy. Um, so just before um, I go into detail in terms of this topic, just a reminder in terms of the format of this session. So it will be a, a Q and A um, that will ask our panelists um, questions in relation to the topics that you can see on the screen. Um, there will also be some detail about that topic on the screen as well. 
Okay, so let's dive into our first topic. So this is all about entry programs. Um, we'll focus obviously on the ones that we offer here within our firm at Grant Fulton. Um, and firstly, I'd like to find out a bit more of what, what leads someone into a career in accountancy. So Dom and Sophie as our two qualified accountants on, on the panelists today, um, it'd be great to hear from you in terms of what led you into a career at Grant Fulton. Um, so I could start off with you, Dom, if that's okay. Well, I don't think I don't think we can hear you very well, Dom. So, oh, I can. We can hear you a bit. Yeah. Is, I mean, everything's working okay. Now we can hear you. Can you hear me? All right. All right. I know what's happened there. Um, <laughs> okay. So, um, what drew me to be a qualified accountant? Uh, gosh, it was a long time ago now. Um, about three years ago. Um, I think there's really a few key things which are really good uh, about being an accountant. Um, Dom, we can't we can't hear you very well still still so I'm just going to pass it over to Sophie and then we'll see if we can sort you out <laughs> um, so Sophie um, if you wouldn't mind talking about what yet led you to career in accountancy Thanks, Janet. Um, so I was drawn to a career in accountancy because um, I actually wanted a job where I could work and learn at the same time. So I was attracted by the professional qualification um, alongside working with a huge variety of businesses and learning how they work. I was particularly drawn to Grant Thornton because of their strong culture for looking after their people. I knew I'd have the opportunity to have responsibilities early on in my career and also wide exposure to build strong client relationships. Great. Thank you, yeah. Sophie. Um, and I suppose before joining any career, um, you'll have misconceptions in terms of what that could look like. Um, so it'd be great to understand if um, you faced any or, or felt any misconceptions before joining the roles that you're in. So Jess and Vincent, as current trainees um, within the firm, it'd be great to hear from you on, on this. So Jess, if you wouldn't mind um, letting us know if you um, faced or had any misconceptions before joining us. Thanks, Janet. I think when I was looking at what I wanted to do as a job, I was considering many different kind of um, professions. But when I looked at accountancy, I think when a lot of people ask me what I do, they think I'm a human calculator or a robot. I don't really do much else. Like a mass, I'm just a human walking spreadsheet. But that's not what the job is at all. It's meeting people from all walks of life, from in all different levels in the business and really understanding how they function and what we can do and offer for them in terms of either tax or advisory or um, audit services and it's so much more than just numbers it's it can be quite personal in some respects which you'll find out a bit later particularly with Sophie's um, experiences too. Thank you Jess and Vincent? Um, I definitely think I had some misconceptions coming into accountancy I get same as Jess I thought that I kind of thought that it would be all about the numbers all about the excel all about the spreadsheet and I'd come out like really technically proficient ready to take on like the world's greatest math challenges <laughs> and stuff like that but it hasn't it hasn't been like that you do you do obviously improve your math skills but then there is a really important qualitative aspect to it as well um the cons there's a, there are reports to write and reports to read and you just gain such a deeper understanding of how businesses work. And then, as just mentioned as well, there is that really interpersonal aspect. Some of some of your clients you end up feeling quite close to, knowing that you're helping them to grow their business and grow the economy. And these are things that I just didn't think I'd be doing before I started. Yeah. So, so do I need to be amazing at maths um, to, to join a firm? Uh, no, it may help. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not. The answer is no. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, so um, obviously we, we, we mentioned a little bit about entry programmes, so it'd be good to explore those in a bit more detail. Um, so it'd be nice to kind of hear a bit more about why anyone should join a particular programme. Um, so if we could start off with talking about our work experience programme or work experience programmes in general. Um, so Jess, I know you completed a work experience programme, so it'd be great to hear why anyone should potentially think about doing one of those. Thank you, Janet. So when I was looking at what I wanted to do after I left school, um, university was an option, but I wanted to see what else I had. And doing, in general, any kind of work experience means that you get, you learn more, you understand more about what someone does. So you learn about these misconceptions that you have, or 
Um, and when I did the uh, work experience at GT, I had done a similar one at another accounting firm, and it was a four-day program where you, you have similar like like-minded students come along and learn about the different services that they provide. And with doing that, it meant that I could really I could actually after the whole week I could really see myself doing this job, and eventually it manifested, and I'm doing it now. And it also made me understand what I wanted in my job and what I wanted to do, and it also made me realise the things that I didn't like in other jobs. So at one point I did a work experience of being a teaching assistant, and realised I'm probably not great at teaching, so I won't go and do that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's definitely um, doing a work experience has mean you can explore different things and understand what your what you value and who you want to be and what you want to be. Great, thank you, Jess. Um, and Sophie, um, as um, someone who's completed the school leave program, um, obviously a while ago now, um, it'd be great yeah. to hear a bit more about um, why anyone should particularly um, do a school leave program. Yeah, so I would definitely recommend the school leave program. Um, for me, if you're certain on a career in accountancy and you knew, you know that university isn't for you, it's a good scheme to start with. So it gives you the opportunity to kickstart your career earlier, whilst also earning and learning in the process allows you to be slightly ahead of your peers um, as you would be on the graduate route and potentially the opportunity for quicker, quicker progression when you qualify. So. Great, thank you Sophie. And Vincent, you're currently on a graduate programme, so I suppose what are the benefits versus the, the school leaver programme um, in terms of joining a graduate programme? Um, I think being on the graduate programme has been great because I was one of those that when I left uni I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted the next 30 years of my life to look like and accountancy means studying accountancy and getting a professional qualification means all of those pathways are still open. I've been delighted to learn since I started that 25% of CEOs in the FTSE 100 are accountants, there are movie directors who are accountants, politicians who are accountants, so I'm just happy that my career path was still, was still open whilst, whilst I was uh, figuring things out. Thinking about being a film director maybe? <laughs> um, thank you Vincent and um, Dom um, you completed our internship program a while ago now um, so it'd be great to hear um, any thoughts in terms of why someone potentially should complete an internship program do you want to speak if you can hear me okay uh, do you want to speak again sorry okay Sorry, Don, we can't. Yeah. It, we can hear you a little bit. It's, it's kind of cutting in and out. All right. We'll come back to Dom. Hopefully, we can get him back on to share his insights a bit more because he, he did complete an internship a little while ago um, with us. Um, and obviously, kind of similar to, to what Jess would have said in terms of work experience, gaining that opportunity to, to kind of understand whether um, the career is right for you. Um, with the internship programmes and our placement programme, um, you could also get an offer to join us as a permanent member of the firm after you complete the programme. So there's some great benefits to it and you get paid as well. Um, and I know when I did an internship, I found it really hard to, to find any that you could get paid. This is a very long time ago. These days, <laughs> obviously, it's a lot more easier. Um, great. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think that's all my questions in terms of um, our topic on our entry programme. So we'll move on to the next topic, which is about qualifications. Perfect. Thank you, Janet. Uh, so next, we're going to focus on the qualifications our trainees undertake to qualify as an accountant. On the screen, you will see just a few of the qualifications we offer at Grant Thornton. Um, and Jess and Vincent on the call will uh, talk through the qualifications that they are doing currently. Um, so, Vincent, if we start with you, are you able to tell us a bit about your qualification and why is you enjoy it? So I'm currently studying the ACA which is uh, three years, 15 exams over the three years, and luckily I passed 12 of them. I'm revising for the last three at the moment. And I think what I enjoy study, what I enjoy about the ACA is, is two main things. Number one is just knowing that having the ACA is a really well-regarded qualification and that once I manage, once I manage to get it, it will open up a lot of doors for me. And also whilst studying for it, I, th I think I was quite surprised by the breadth of the ACA. I thought we'd all be about accounting, but I learned so much about tax, about advisory, about financial management and the wider business environment. So that variety has been really important for me. Perfect. Thank you. And if we move on to Jess, who is studying a different qualification, if you could tell us a bit more about your qualification and why it is that you enjoy it. 
Um, so I'm doing the ATT CTA pathway. So that will be a program that will be taking about four to five years to do. And um, so right now with the ATT that I'm doing, that's three exams and then three small exams that you do on your own accord. And they cover, ATT is mainly just tax. But then when you go to do things like CTA or you can move on to do ACA, you can specialize in further more in tax or like Vincent is doing now with ACA. I think what I really do enjoy about it is that it's something that does stretch and push you. And it's, they, they, they're, not te they're not terribly hard exams, but they're definitely something that does challenge you in it. And that's what I really enjoy about it. But as well as it being challenging, you have such a, a broad, of sort of support in the business is that you have tutors that you have that you can contact whenever you need to when you're working um, and whenever you're doing revision and then whilst working a lot of the information you do learn is stuff that you will actually use in your day-to-day -day job or have come across before even before you've started studying and for your next exam sometimes and furthermore even onto that you have whilst working and studying you have a whole business of people who specialize in these very different things that you learn about mm -hmm. and it means you can go up to them and ask them these very you could think to you it's a mundane question but for them it's something that they want to see you succeed because everyone else has done these exams as well and they're incredibly helpful and helping me do like things like accounting where I'm like oh, this is probably something that you do really easily but can I have some help with it <laughs> that's what I really love about it, is that everyone everyone wants to see each other and everyone wants to support and lift each other as well with doing these exams. Perfect. So you mentioned uh, doing work alongside study. How is it that you managed to juggle the two alongside one another? Jess, sorry. <laughs> um, I, as much as well as um, asking people for help and not being afraid to ask that whenever, I use my diary a lot to help me. So I, I will organise time for myself, particularly uh, and near to exams when I'll do revision and when and what topics I'll do um, and then as well as you organize the stuff that you have to do you organize the fun that you organize the fun around it so that you do go and have fun with friends after work or you do go do that one weekend away with someone so you it's it's creating that balance for yourself I think it's important that you look after yourself as much as you could do what you need to do. Mm -hmm. Good points. Vincent, anything to add on that? Any tips on how to juggle work alongside study? Um, I think this is something that I found quite difficult at the beginning because I was the type of person who would just wake up and the only thing I knew was what time dinner was that day. So having <laughs> to having to balance the my exams and, and work has been really good in terms of time management. So what I kind of try to do is just to, there are two things I try to do. The first is to really like plan my time ahead, plan my weeks ahead know what I'm advising and when and the second is just having open conversation with my managers that I have exams so they're in those instances it might be difficult to work a bit later and they're always like really understanding because as just mentioned everyone in the near everyone in the firm has been through this before so talk so making sure I have a dialogue with my managers and planning my time well Mm. Great, thank you. Uh, so now we will move on to our next topic and I'll hand back to Janet again. Um, and so this one is, what do we do at Grant Thornton? Great, thank you, Amy. Um, so yeah, for this topic, we'll explore a bit more about what we do day to day. Um, so our business is split into three service lines, which is audit, tax and advisory, which you can hit, see on the screen. Um, so in order to explore this in a bit more detail, it'd be good to find out um, about what we enjoy the most working in these particular areas so if I, can't, if I can start off with you Vincent as I know you're currently within the audit mm. function it'd be great to hear what you enjoy the most about working in audit. I think what I enjoy the most about working in audit is that I work in a number of audits in one year so I'm always working with a different team and when you first come out of university and you go into like the big professional services world it can be quite daunting working with people a lot older than you and stuff so at the start it's like how do I make friends and stuff but when you're on audit then you go into like small teams and then you're constantly changing teams you're in so it's really good working with loads of different people and also I think I really enjoy the exposure you have to seniority so on every audit you'll be working with a partner one of the leaders in the firm so you get really close to them have a lot of contact and then you also have a lot of direct contact with whoever's leading the business that you're auditing, which was pretty scary in the first week, but mm -hmm. you get used you get used to it, and it's a really important skill for the future. 
Great, thank mm -hmm. you, Vincent. Um, and tax, um, so Jess, you're currently within our tax team, so it'd be great to hear a bit more about um, what you enjoy about working in tax. So within tax, I, it was uh, like, like Vincent said, it's kind of daunting on your first day. And for me particularly, I was coming in at 18, so I was, was going to be working with people quite, a, not a lot, but that's quite mean. <laughs> but <laughs> people, they're a bit older than me. The more, the more people older than me than I'm used to being around, like at school. Um, but everyone was incredibly kind and inviting. And what was so inviting about going to this job was that every day was so different. Everyone and anyone who I spoke to, everyone's got their own specialism and you work within teams to come to a conclusion on something and it was a really again it was something else that challenges you and it was and it was something that just ticked well with me of problem solving and things like that so I really really enjoyed about it great thank you Jess um have we got Dom back on I am here should we try and Yay. see if it works it Ooh. does work we can hear we can you, hear you. Um, <laughs> so um dom um i don't know if you want to introduce yourself again and just a bit about your background yeah. and um yeah, i also yeah. wanted to um obviously ask you about advisory and what you do in advisory so so yeah I'll, over to you okay i'll go quick in case it breaks again um <laughs> so my name is dominic i uh, i work in our um advisory practice overall but i work particularly with us as an it consultant um what do I enjoy about my job? Uh, I have great exposure, as these kind of guys were saying, I have great exposure to lots of different clients, but I think what's a little bit different about my job is that I am sometimes on much longer term clients. So as well as getting experience of kind of a lot of different places, I also build up some really good knowledge of uh, the clients that I work with in quite a lot of detail. So for example, right now I'm working on um, uh, a controls transformation project with a very big uh, global bank. And I have been there since February and I will be there until November. Um, so it's quite, a, it's quite a good piece of work to really understand exactly what is going on uh, with a client. And I think what also, what that tends to lead towards is a development of a few more kind of soft skills in the sense that I have to manage a very long-term relationship with some quite senior people in order to make sure that we get the information that we need to conduct our work um, and to make sure that we are giving the right advice at the right time. So, I mean, there are, there are lots of benefits to it, I think, um, from my perspective, uh, in that it's, it, it's, just a, it's just a very interesting role um, for me. Obviously, other people might, might feel differently. I know that lots of people don't particularly like IT and find it very boring, and that's completely fair enough. Um, but uh, yeah, but for me, it's, it's fantastic. I really enjoy it. Great, thank you, Dom. Um, so you talked a lot about clients. Um, so I know for all of us, um, clients take up a big part of your roles. So um, it'd be great to hear a bit more about the experiences that you had have with clients. Um, so maybe some of the best experience and maybe some of the more difficult experiences that you've had. Um, so Dom, um, I'm gonna come back to you because I'm hoping that your IT still works. <laughs> <laughs> um, so if you can talk about any of the, um, the, 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 I suppose some of the better experiences or best experiences that you've had with clients. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I've had quite a few. Uh, I think probably the one that stands out most to me um, in terms of uh, really nice things to have happened uh, was not that long ago actually I was speaking to um, I was speaking to a sort of C-suite level executive sort of a head of IT um, type role at a uh, financial services firm and um, he, he'd kind of just been just been sitting in because I was uh, doing a bit of work with one of his uh, colleagues and he um, you know he was just kind of in the meeting and just listening in to what we were saying what we were talking about and uh, at the end of the meeting we had about an hour where we just kind of chatted uh, which is kind of quite nice you know when you've sort of only been in the job for three years and there's this guy who is very senior you know we've been been working in this business for you know 20 30 years whatever um and uh, through that conversation uh, he actually ended up saying, oh, you know, uh, we need someone, we need a, a partner to be conducting uh, some SWIFT attestations, some uh, other various bits of work that we can do, Grant Thornton can do as a firm. Um, and I sort of thought, oh, hold on, okay, uh, that's that sort of sounds relatively promising. Um, so I then put him in contact with uh, some of the uh, directors in my team, who then went on to actually sell quite a lot of, quite a lot of work to that business, um, which was just a really nice thing to have sort of developed and, and all that kind of just happened through having a chat. Um, and I think that was, that was, for me, that was really sort of like a, a super positive thing to have happened and a really nice thing to have happened because you sort of feel like, oh, okay, I'm actually contributing to the firm more broadly, you know? 
um so yeah that was that was that was really cool that was quite really nice yeah no sounds it um and sophie uh i'm going to give you the difficult question so um, <laughs> Thanks. I, I suppose some of the more difficult or tougher experiences that we might have had with a client if you can share an experience that you've had of course um so we work alongside a number of clients in various different industries uh, so although i specialize in financial services now during my training contract i actually worked on some retail clients um, but this particular client I was on had been heavily hit by the recession in 2008. Uh, unfortunately, the client didn't survive. And whilst the audit team was on site, the client was put into administration. So the whole finance team that we were working with was made redundant while we were there. It was really sad to experience and witness like the harsh reality of what can happen to businesses when they're faced with uncertain situations. So I guess it's very relevant as to where we are now working in unprecedented times. And just to sort of point out that as a business, we do do our best to support our clients and guide them through the changes. Um, but unfortunately, these things do happen. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. obviously sounds tough, but um, a good learning experience to, to obviously go through that, especially yeah. if it's earlier on in your career as well. Um, great. Well, thank you very much. Hopefully that gives um, the audience a bit of a flavour of what we do. Um, so we'll move on to um, the last topic, the final topic, which is progressing your career. So handing over to Amy. Perfect. Thank you, Janet. Uh, so moving on to our final topic, we are going to share some tips on how to progress your career and any opportunities that starting a career at Grant Thornton can give you. Uh, so Jess, if we start with you, if you were to look back to the start of your career, is there any advice that you would give to your teenage self? Um, I think the main thing I would tell my teenage self is that knowledge is power. I think uh, when you you think when you're a teen you think you know everything and then you get to 20 and you're like nope I don't know anything <laughs> and imagine it's like that as you get older and older and it's the more you ask the more you know the more you learn the more you understand where how you value yourself and where you want to push and push yourself what you def what you define as success and where you want to see yourself in a certain amount of years and by doing those work experiences by doing intern placements or even trying a job it's it's important to know those and understand that so yeah knowledge is power great um and kind of looking to the future uh, sophie what would you say is next for you in your career uh so next for me in my career i have literally just returned back to the team after maternity leave so for me i've got a one-year-old at home which has its own challenges so at the moment i'm focusing on maintaining sort of a good work-life balance uh, and quality time with my family um, as my son gets older, I'll definitely be looking to face the technical challenges of making it to director. Uh, but for now, I'm just enjoying my role and taking the opportunity to further build my client relationships. Uh, I'm also working on a project where we're developing our team internally. So I've taken on the role of head of people and culture for our team. Um, so looking at driving positive changes, looking after our people, um, which has obviously been particularly challenging for the past four weeks, mm -hmm. um, but something that I'm really enjoying. So looking forward to what's ahead. Perfect. And final question for you, Dom. Um, as someone who is very recently qualified, what is next for you? Um, well, a little bit like uh, Jess was saying, actually, I think that the more you know, the better. Um, particularly sort of in this industry, we are a knowledge industry. You know, we sell our expertise. Um, and I think that for me, <laughs> even though I've literally just finished uh, qualifying as an accountant, uh, I'm going to go again and I'm going to uh, learn how to become a certified information systems auditor. Because um, that's kind of a, a little bit like uh, what I'm doing at the minute. But I just think that being ever more qualified and ever more sort of, of an expert in an area really gives you like a niche, which you can then have for the rest of your career, you know. Um, and ultimately, that's that's why we get paid. You know, pe people pay Grant Thornton because they want to use the knowledge and expertise that we have. And so I think that if I am an expert in an area, then, you know, that stands me in really good stead because in, you know, 20 years, 30 years time, uh, you still have that, you still have that knowledge, you still have that in your head, you still, st still have that experience. So mm -hmm. I think that's, uh, I think that's, that's, that's what's next for me, uh, even though it sounds super boring. Um, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I, think, <laughs> I think in terms of a long-term career, that's definitely the way to go. And if I could uh, just quickly sort of step in there about a, little bit, a little bit again about what Jess said. Um, I think if I was going to give any advice to sort of a younger version of myself, it would really just be um, to sort of to take the opportunities that are available to you. And I think that one of the things that is really, really special for a lot of younger people right now is the fact that um, the apprenticeship levy 
is is like a thing. When I was at school, it was it didn't exist, right? And now the apprenticeship levy is a thing. So firms like Grant Thornton and firms like you know other other accountancy firms and uh, other you know engineering businesses, whatever else, you know they get money for having apprentices, right? Which is just like mind blowing. I mean, that's just fantastic. So if 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 you can take that opportunity to to think to yourself, right, actually. Do I want to be an apprentice? Do I want to get, you know, do I want to be qualified? Do I want to be an expert in a field at the age of like 22, 23? Man, I would, I would do that straight away. But I, I'm not here to, I, I didn't, I didn't the scheme, but I, I just think it's so good. And I think that is such a fantastic opportunity for so many young people that it's really, yeah. really worth thinking about. Great. Thank you, Dom. And thank you to our guest speakers for answering mine and Janet's questions. We're now going to move on to the questions and answers that have been, or to the questions that have been coming through uh, throughout the webinar. Our colleague Ursula is going to read some of your questions out and we will answer them as a team. Thanks, Amy. Can you hear me okay? Yes. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, so we have got quite a few questions coming in, um, so we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, so Amy, this first one is for you. So um, we've, we've had this question quite a lot, actually. So is a career in accountancy open for people with non-finance accountancy related degrees? Yep, definitely. Uh, the, the one good thing to know is that we don't have any entry requirements and we also don't look at any university to, university degrees. So you can apply with any degree you like. Um, in terms of our entry requirements, they are balanced across a number of different areas. And whilst academic performance is one part of the application we look at, it's not the only part we consider. So it's balanced across your academic achievements, your personal achievements and your connection with grad Thornton and our values so definitely yes you um, any degree or any subjects please apply um, and don't think that we are only open to those with a financial background. Great thanks Amy um, and Jessica I've got a question for you um, so I know accountancy is not only about the numbers but I'm highly interested in doing calculations Jessica mentioned that there are other things needed what other skills do you think are required? That's a really good question I like that <laughs> so other than calculations and skills I think I think we've briefly touched upon it um, during this call. I think Vincent and Dom had touched upon it, like soft skills. So things like being able to do things like time management. So if you like when you're when you've been at school, university, understanding how to work to um, do enough time, do enough revision or studying to be able to feel like you've done enough for exams. Um, another soft skill I think would be being able to talk quite confidently with somebody even if you don't feel technically confident yourself I feel like if you're able to hold a conversation with someone and ask thought-provoking questions I think that's quite a good skill to have as well um, and I, I'd say confidence as well I think even I'm I, when I when I joined in the company I wasn't particularly confident in myself but if you bring about this like positive image about yourself and you believe that then it just exudes out of you when you meet other people and mm. I think that's something that's quite important for you to think about yeah. Thanks Jess um, and Sophie and Vincent and um, either of you can answer, can answer this question or feel free sort of both to answer it so regarding the audit service line how big are the team sizes usually on a job and how often are away jobs where you're required to stay overnight in a hotel do you want to go first vincent um no off you. <laughs> um, so i uh because I've I've specialised in financial services, so our team is quite a niche team. Um, so in terms of my team, I would say our average team size is sort of four or five people. But we have got jobs that would, that would be one person, and we've got jobs that have got fifteen people. So there is sort of a big scope of variety. Um, in terms of away jobs, I reckon about twenty percent of our jobs in the department are away jobs. Um, some of those are in the UK, so a lot of our insurance jobs are sort of in the south of the UK. Um, but we've also got quite a big portfolio of international travel. So we've got jobs in the US. Um, I've personally been to Canada. I've been all around Europe. Um, so, yeah, there is, there is a lot of opportunity for international travel as well. So 
Um, I don't know, Vincent, from your team, might be have a bit of a different perspective. So. Yeah, I think it's um, I think it's quite similar in my team. So I work with Human Capital Consumer, which works alongside the technology, media, telecommunications team, and the real estate team. And there are there is quite a lot of um, travel. I'd say probably about thirty percent of our jobs are away jobs, and it's always like a bit interesting to see whether you manage to get on them. So, <laughs> so if, you, if you if you do, you're really lucky. So, um, so for example, in our when I first when I first started at Grant Thornton in our first week, one of my colleagues was off to New Zealand and my mouth was just open like why are you and um, <laughs> take me and with recently, you. <laughs> <laughs> recently we had someone go to Equatorial Guinea. So wherever we have clients, then there are opportunities. And in terms of like the team sizes, they can range from really close knit teams with just like two individuals when you go out to field work to teams ranging across ten to fifty. I think the largest team I went on, the largest team I was with was about 11 and we went up to Manchester during the World Cup. So that was really good fun. Yes. Really enjoy being with good team. So, <laughs> yeah, it varies quite a lot. Great. Thanks, Vincent. So, and Janet or Dom, if one of you could answer this for me, please, or both of you can chip in. Um, so. For those who don't know which area of accountancy they want to go into, i.e. order or tax, advisory, whatever it may be, what advice would you give before deciding the best path for yourself? I'll, I'll start off, Dom. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, I mean, we get this question quite often um, within the recruitment team. Um, and uh, we obviously say the main thing is to obviously do as much research, research as possible. Um, so using um, the internet as much as you can, it's really useful. When I was younger, I didn't even have that as a tool. Um, so it is a major difference. Um, but also speaking to people. Um, so if you approached us uh, as a firm and said, actually, I'm not too sure if I want to apply for audit attack, we could put you in touch with um, people currently within those positions for you to then find out okay what is more suitable for me um, so definitely speaking to people and kind of getting um, a bit more um, I suppose knowledge in terms of um, trying to align your skill sets with that particular um, role so yeah so I would say definitely use the internet but also obviously communicate and speak to as many people as possible to help you make the right decision for you yeah I think that's I think that's definitely the case. I think that you'd be best off um, just almost like, I'm going to sound like an auditor now, but almost like sort of uh, <laughs> doing an assessment of what it is that you're good at and just being really honest and frank with yourself and saying like, okay, what is it that I really enjoy? What is it that I'm really good at? So before I got my job at Grant Thornton, I was applying for jobs left, right and centre when I was in my final year at university uh, because I was really concerned that I wasn't going to get a job as lots of people are. Um, but it was only when I actually stopped and I thought about, okay, what is it that I'm actually good at? What is it that I actually enjoy? Um, and then work from there that I got the job at GT. And it was actually the first job that I, that I went for and the first job that I got um, after I sort of had that moment of like realization that actually I'm just applying for jobs, like whatever, like, you know, sort of willy nilly type thing. But actually, if you, if you really think about it and you really think, okay, what is it that I can do? You know, what is it that I can offer? I think you can find that you'll find a job much more easily and you'll find a job which is which is just better suited to you really um if you're just applying for jobs sort of like you know whatever job is available it's it's very tricky um so yeah i'd, I'd say you, you need to really really think about what is it what it is that you like what it is that you're good at um and that doesn't mean that you know it has to be something in your in your degree path kind of as as we were saying earlier um you know if you didn't study accountancy it's not you know it's not a problem um i studied international relations at university and i now work in it you know like it, it doesn't matter <laughs> um but it's it's very much kind of it's just if you think about what is it that you actually enjoy what is it you're actually good at that that really that really makes a big difference in, in, in my opinion Great, thanks Tom. Um, Vincent, I have another question for you. So if I was to apply for an audit role, what sort of skills and experiences do you think I would need to showcase in an interview environment? Uh, so I think in I think in an interview environment, some of the skills you need to showcase is like your ability to think through problems. So it's not about um, something that took me a while to learn when I started working. It's not actually about knowing the right answer straight away it's about thinking through it in a methodical manner which means that when you approach uh unknown problems that you're able to deal with them 
I think it's also important. I think it's also really important to show that you've really researched uh, Grant Thornton and their values and how you fit in with that and are aligned with that. And it's also really important to research the role, just because. Just it's not just it's not just that we want to know that you've spent time going away and doing some reading. It's more about when you've researched the role, as Don mentioned, you know whether you fit in, you know whether it's something that it, you can see yourself actually doing day to day, and then we know and you know whether it's something that you can excel in. So that research is definitely key. And just to add on to that, um, clients obviously is a major part of the work that we do. So being able to build relationships, relationships, I should say, with people is really important. Um, so within that interview process, you want to obviously think about how you can build rapport with the people um, that you're being interviewed by as well. Great, thank you, Janet and Vincent. So we are getting a few, quite a few questions in asking um, when the graduate school leave replacement and internship opportunities will open for the 2021 season. So Janet or Amy, I just wondered if one of you could answer yeah. that question, please. Yeah, um, our recruitment starts in the autumn every year. So it's normally around the beginning of September um, and we will open roles for positions to start in 2021. Um, and that could be January 2021 or September 2021. Um, so um, you can keep an eye on our website, but we also will have an opportunity for you to register your interests so we can let you know when they do become open. Great, thank you. Um, and then we have one, I guess this might be the final question. So, um, and this is one for all of you. So it would be really good um, if each of you could sort of have an input on this. So what motivates you the most to come into work every morning in your relevant department at Grant Thornton? So Janet, if we start with you, if that's okay, or whoever wants to go first. Yeah, no, that's fine with yeah. me. Um, I'm quite lucky I work with an amazing team so I mean the people at Grant Fulton are great um, and it isn't just a team I work with it's it, across obviously the firm um, obviously all you guys that are on the panel with me today um, you obviously you, know, you really helped us out um, we we don't obviously just work in silos in our firm we do um, really work together so it is quite nice we've got a very lovely co culture so I think that makes a massive difference to, to go into coming into the office every day. Perfect. I'll follow up with that just to say that I work with really great colleagues and obviously at the minute we're not you know going into an office and seeing one another but in this very strange time we have all managed to stay really well connected and and Grant Thornton gives us that not only the technology but the the culture that just transpires in us being so separate to one another um, I don't think any of us on this call would say that we have any difficulties in in catching up with one another or our colleagues so it just makes it a really great uh, a really great place to work that not only do we see that in the office but that communicates as well when we are at home mm. I'll go next um, I think I'm just gonna echo what Amy and Janet have said that <laughs> if, when we were going into the office every day it was every time and any time I saw someone I'd walk through the office and just say hi and how, how everyone's doing and go get a coffee in the kitchen before you start and it's just it's such a it's such a chilled environment to be in and I actually enjoy what I do as well is that I'm, when I'm kept busy I'm got I feel like I have so much responsibility as well and it's something that I really want to push myself as well as I feel like I'm helping and contributing about being and I feel really valued when I'm at work as well and even I'm doing it now when I'm having coffee breaks in the morning I'll call everyone like hi <laughs> and uh, I really like I'm able to still feel like even though I'm not in the office that I still am and I get to talk to everyone but I guess um, I think for me, I'm kind. I think for me, I'm motivated by. I just know that in my line of work, I really have opportunities every day to like explore my capacity and expand my understanding. Every day, I'm going in, and I'm either I'm either learning something new or being taught why what I knew before was incorrect. And it's really, really, <laughs> really, it really, it really is a motivating factor going in and knowing that you're going to be challenged. And also, just to echo what everyone else has said, I just. But I love the friends that I have at GT. Working from home has been working from home has been tough in one respect, but it's also been really good in making me realise how close I am with my colleagues and how much of a reason they are for me wanting to come to work every day. 
Thanks, Vincent. Um, I guess for me, so I would definitely echo everyone's uh, comments on the people, um, but trying to think outside the box and say something else is a different answer. Um, I, for me, really enjoy my job because I face a new challenge every single day. Um, as much as I run a portfolio of clients, um, they have different challenges facing them every year that I come back to their audit. Um, I learn something new every day, whether that's from the people I'm working with, whether that's from my clients, whether that's a technical update. So I think there's no boredom factor because there's always something new to something new to face and something new to understand. Um, but there's also um, the fact that you're constantly learning, which is great. So. Yeah, um, I would echo all of that, but I would also say that it's nice to uh, get paid lots of money. No, um, <laughs> and the, that's, that's, no although you know, obviously it is a factor. Uh, it is quite nice. You know, we, we are sort of as professional services, uh, we do get paid well. You know, there's no point denying it, uh, which is very nice. But I think that definitely, as as uh, as Vincent and Sophie you were saying there, the fact that you can learn new things every day and the fact that you have that with you, like you know, sort of whatever you do in the future, is really good. Um, and the fact that, you know, like the more that you learn, the more your time uh, is worth is just like, you know, when you actually sort of comprehend that, it's really nice because it's like, you know, my career is in my hands um, and, and I can I can sort of do whatever I want as long as I put the work in. Right. Uh, which is, yeah, just a fantastic place to be, I think, in my opinion. Great. Thanks, everyone, for for your answers. And um, Amy, I will hand back over to you. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, Ursula. Um, so that concludes our webinar. Thank you not only to the people on the screen, um, but also to you attending. I hope you have found it useful. Uh, just to reiterate, there will be a survey to give feedback on not only this webinar, but the previous ones that we have run. And this session will be on our website within the next few days. Um, so I think we're all going to log off here, but thank you for attending. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>